Hi, this is Inval Innovation YouTube channel. In this video, we will see about TypeSpec. TypeSpec solves one of the bigger problems in API development. TypeSpec, formerly known as CADL, is a domain-specific language, DSL, and a framework developed by Microsoft for designing and modeling APIs. It allows developers to describe the structure and behavior of APIs at a very high level and focusing on the types models used within the API and then generate various implementation artifacts such as open API specification or client libraries or server stubs or protobuf if you are using gRPC and more. Let's take you are currently using open API specification for standardization. Most probably you will be using the decorator in the code to generate the API specification. Here it is not clearly living in the separate space since you are trying to create open API specification through decorators you are mostly using it to convey what the API performs currently rather than using it to design the API. So this becomes more like you are doing the API development parallel you are describing this API. But what if I want to generate an API specification right before starting any of the development and from there I can able to derive different specifications and then I can even derive client libraries from this type spec. Let's take you are not using the decorators and you are manually writing the open API specification YAML. The major problem you can face there is it is very verbose and slightly difficult to manage, modify the open API specification. And if you want to create a different specifications like protobuf, then you need to write from scratch. This will become a real big bottleneck if your team is trying to move away from one technology to other technology. What are the different things TypeSpec really solves. Consistency. TypeSpec standardizes API design across teams and services preventing inconsistency. Flexibility. Separates API design from implementation as I mentioned making it adaptable to multiple protocols like REST, gRPC, etc. Error prevention. Enforces strong typing to catch design errors very early. Efficiency. Automates generation of documentation, clients, and server stops, reducing a lot of manual work. Version control. Simplify API evolution and versioning without breaking existing clients. And it also ensures cross-language support. Ensures consistency across clients written in different programming languages. And as I mentioned, the version control cross-language consistency automatically brings maintainability. Because of these different functionalities, it automatically lends itself for a longer term maintenance and collaboration across a large team. Now we'll create an employment management application with type spec. Before diving deep into the employment management application, I want to give a very high level overview what are the different APIs this particular employment management has. It has two main division. One is to maintain the employees and one is to maintain the department. In the employees, we will have get employees list which is used to get the list of employees. We will be doing pagination also and get employee detail by ID. This is like to get a specific detail for a particular ID. You will be providing employee ID in the path param and then create employee. This is a post call and this creates employee and update employee. This is a put call. It updates the existing employee and then delete employee. This uses delete method and which is used to delete an employee. And then for departments, you'll be having similar, which is get list of departments in your organization. And a high level, this is what we are gonna perform. So first we will start with a type spec project. To start a type spec project, you need to have type spec compiler, which need to be installed at the global level. So we will start with type spec installation at a global level. So open command prompt and enter the command npm install hyphen g stands for installing it globally and then at typespec slash compiler this installs the typespec compiler go to the folder you want to create a project here in this case i want to create in this particular folder i'm already there tsp init this initializes a project and it says the typespec tutorial is not empty so i will delete this so here i'm selecting generic trust client and then the project name is employee management. You want to create a git ignore file. 
yes and uh, what are the different dependencies you want to install so this already installed type spec http type spec rest and then type spec open api and now i will open this in visual studio code now you have main.esp this is the entry point for your type spec build this file typically contains the main definitions for your model services and operations this is where you will be adding and we will be also modularizing it so we will have the common elements in a different esp file and for now we will have only the main.esp we have package.json this is where all the metadata and all the dependencies for this particular project contains here dev dependencies and then the peer dependencies it has compiler type spec compiler type spec http type spec rest and type spec open api and you also have tsp config.yaml there's a configuration file for the type spec compiler specifying options and settings for the build process and then once you have done this you will open the terminal here and enter the command tsp install this will install all the required dependencies once you click tsp install it will automatically create node modules node modules is the folder where all the dependencies goes here tsp compile this will create tsp output in the tsp output we can able to open api ml we don't have any definition now so this will be pretty much empty for now but once you created the main tsp you can able to define the emitter so emitter is a concept which defines what output you want if you want like in open api specification you can use open api specification emitter if you want the result to be in protobuf you can use the protobuf emitter in this case i'm using emitter now it automatically creates a tsp output folder and then you will have be having type spec and open api 3 inside that you will be having the open api ml one handy thing what i will recommend is you can install the type spec extension so if you search type spec you will get type spec for visual studio code i already installed this this is a very handy tool it comes with all the auto complete features everything now going back to the real coding we will start with the model so the model is the core piece where you will be defining the structure of the response so in this case i have an employee model which i already created so i will copy and paste this employee model here this employee model has name department id date of joining and date of birth and we will also create another model which is for department and for now i will keep it very minimal and this department only contains name we will add a enum so here in this case this employee can have any different designations with enum you can able to define all the possible values to create a enum you need to define enum followed by the enum name whatever you want to specify and then you will be providing all the possible values which you want to be defined for this particular enum and here in this case i will add this designation to the employee so here it will be like designation designation as a type this designation is the enum and it can be any one of this particular value now we have created two different models and then we also created a enum which provides uh, possible values for this designation and now we will add validation to this model you can have different validations i will create a common tsp this is a file where all my common code gonna live i will create common tsp file and in the common tsp file i will put this organization name as agile utils I am defining the namespace agileutils.type and here I am using format UID. Format is a decorator in type spec which defines UID and then you can define the UID which extends string and you also have ID which extends this particular UID. So whenever you define a particular property of ID type then this need to be in format UID. There is also a scalar email type that email is extending string and we also have a regular expression which validates what characters this particular email need to have we will be also creating one for ssn so in this case of ssn we will be defining a regular expression it should have three characters followed by hyphen followed by two characters followed by hyphen followed by four characters and everything need to be in a numeric format we will go back to the main tsp now in the main tsp first you need to import common dot tsp so import we will first see how we will reference the id without 
the using syntax. So now I will create ID here and that ID need to be of type ID whatever we have defined here. I will use agile utils dot types whatever I defined the namespace here agile util dot types and then I define ID. If you feel this is verbose cut short this and you can use this as using agile utils dot types. If we are defining agile utils dot types then what it automatically does is it takes agile util dot types so you have all this property whatever we have defined here for our use so we no need to mention agile util start types everywhere this name character we don't want to make it greater than 20 characters in length so i will use at max length decorator and i will put this as 20 so what it does is it defines this particular name property should not have characters length exceeding 20 characters and then we will create email so in this case we also created email type here so we will use that email type and then we will add ssn and similarly we will use the ssn type whatever we have defined in the common.tsp we will define id so id is also same it need to be in uid format so we already defined that in the common.tsp and we also need email. We have added models and we have added enum and we have added validation and we have created custom data types for our type spec. With that, we will go back to the namespace. Namespace we already used here. Namespaces in type spec helps you to organize your models and operations logically. And they act as containers for related definitions making your api easier to manage and understand here in this case i'm grouping everything whatever we have defined below this as agile util dot types so i am logically grouping everything here namespace is more like a object container which holds all the models and all the operations so that you can able to use this as a group so for example here we are using uid in main.tsp so that is coming from agile utils type because i have logically grouped uid id email ssn as agile utils types now we will create a namespace and then we will start with our survey so for this i will create a namespace of employee management i am using add service annotation so add service annotation takes title as a param so here i am providing title as employee management and the server i am defining it as https agileutils.com and this is a single server endpoint now we have created this particular namespace we will put all the models operations related to this employee management directly inside this this employee department and designation all those things we are grouping under employee management namespace so this namespace acts as a container for all the models and the operation it holds now we will create two main routes so you can create routes directly or you can group that as a parent route through interface. So I will create a two different routes. One is for employees and another one is for departments. So to create this group, you need to use interface. You have departments, department API and employees, employee API. Now we will also add error response and success response. You will be defining model for error response. It has code and which is of int 32. And then we we'll also has a message defining what is that particular error is. Now we have created our base structure. Now we will start adding the get, put, post and delete operations. To create an operation, you need to first define what method it is. I am going to use the post method to create an employee. So I will be defining a post decorator. This is an operation, so I will be using the op op syntax and then I will be defining the method here. This is create employee and this takes employee object as a input. So you put body here and then employee and this employee is of type employee. The response can be of success response or and here in the success response, you can pass in the data type. So here, in, if it is success, I want employee to be returned. Here in success response, we are passing the employee. That means this particular model takes employee response and that's what it renders as a date. Now we have defined post method. Similarly, I already created get, put and delete for employee. 
for get i will use at get annotation and i will use op for operations and then list of employees and success response and list of employees doesn't take any param and uh, we will modify this later to take pagination value but for now it doesn't take any params it can produce success response if it is a success response it returns a list of employee so we are using array here so this is where the reusing capability comes we want the data to be as array not as a single employee object and then it can also return error response and get employee id it has a path param so if you define at path that means id is now a path param this uri will look something like this and then it can return success response or error response for update employee we will be using output decorator and this is output method so this is a put rest method and then this is operation and it takes id as a path param and also it takes a body that is of a employee type and then it can return success response with the data of type employee or error response and then finally we will have delete employee delete employee takes path id and then success response you can return a deleted employee or else you can just return this as string the message stating like employee successfully deleted and then you have error response similarly we will create for departments as well so we will start with post and get and put and delete this is similar to what we have done here so in this case also for delete department rather than keeping it as null we will change it to string now we will compile this and see how our open api yaml looks like so there are like some error we will understand what all those error uh, this is where the type spec for visual studio code shines we can able to see we have a error here so this should not be a colon this should be a pipe and now we will try to see if there is any other error it looks like there is no other error here so we will issue tsp compile space dot the space dot states we are compiling in the current directory so now the compilation completed successfully now we will open the open api specification which it automatically created we can able to see it created paths which has departments and this is of post type and in the post type you have the schema the schema is mentioned as atref and you have the department and you also have error response and you can able to see all the models whatever we have defined in the bottom designations is a enum and the enum we can able to find the different types it holds and also you have the error response with the two properties code and message and you also have employee with all the properties it looks fine but what if i want to add examples so to create a example you need to use at example decorator and then you need to provide all the properties whatever you have defined here in this case i have id name email ssn and then department id date of joining date of birth and designation i have everything here we will do the same for department as well so for the department as well we will use the at example decorator and it takes id name and email and now we will try to compile the same so now we have compiled this it compiled successfully now if i go back to this we can able to see example so this example states what the values it it has now we have added the examples now we will see how to respond with a different status code now we already defined every operation has two responses one is success response or error response and what if this particular create employee can able to have like different uh, error codes or response code like 201 202 error first we will start with success response so this create employee can send 201 or 202 so for that we can have a individual object that individual object can have status code and then the body i will remove this success response and error response instead of that i will use the object for each status code this can return two success response if the status code is 201 another success response 202 which is accepted returning employee this is similar for get as well in the get we can have 200 will also define 404 404 means the not found if you are not finding any employees then we can return 404 similarly we will do it for everything 
and now we have done the same for department as well so here we have department api in the department api also for created cancel 201 so here this encapsulates the status code and then a department body in an object and this can have status code you can add different property here as well so now this is how we will be defining response for each status code now we'll see how to define an error models we will start with add error annotations and we will see how to define generic exceptions like not found or validation error and internal server error. This might be very generic on organization level. So you can define this in a common file. So I will use error models.tsp and this error models.tsp we will use a namespace. Here this namespace is used to group all the error models logically. So now we have agile utils error models and it has not found error and code message and then we have code message details as for validation error and internal server has code and message. Now go back to the main.tsp. Now we need to also import the error models.tsp like how we have done the common tsp and then here we need to use using followed by the name whatever we have specified there so it is agile utils dot error models as i mentioned before if you are defining the using and agile models or error models that means you can directly provide the models value here inside the operations rather than providing it as agile utils error models dot not found error in that way i will modify the employee operations we already have 201 uh, 404 400 for 400 i define the error as validation error so if you click this validation error this has code validation error message string and then details as array so similarly you can define this in different places as well so you have the validation error not found error internal server error for update employee we can do the similar thing for department api as well no, here we have create department and uh, here also we have defined the 400, 500 and 404 and we have defined the 400 as validation error for this particular case and then 500 as internal server error and 404 here as not found error we can add this not found error for get department by id as well before recompiling we can go and check how our error response looks like for each and every operation it has success 200 we already defined as an object so this is as an error response and then the success response the success response schema has data and data as type string in this case in other model case we can able to see the success response as data and then the data is of employee response now i will compile this so that will create a new open api.yml so in the open api.yml you can go to any employee response or de department response where we modified the response object and you can able to see it has 500 the 500 as server error they also you have the schema and the schema defines the internal server errors so this utter annotation does creates model error type now we will see how to use a common parameters so let's take i have a common parameters which can be applicable to different endpoints for example here in the list employees I want to use pagination so the pagination can have offset and limit I will create a model for pagination I will reuse this common parameters in different I will define this model along with that I will also define an example so here it has two properties one is offset and which is of integer type and limit is of also of integer type here I have specified validation decorators that is min value it can have a minimum of one a maximum of 100 and then i have provided example with offset as 10 and limit as 10. now we have created this pagination you can use the spread operator to use this pagination in list of employees you can use pagination like this. now we have pagination applied for list of departments and then pagination applied for list of employees now we compile this list employees and the list employees common parameters this will be applicable to the list employees and also it applicable to the list of departments so you can reuse this model across different operations so if you go back here you can able to see the request body request body as content as application.json 
and it has a schema and schemas defined as pagination here. By this way, you can define common parameters in TypeSpec. Next, we will see about authentication. So for example, if you want to set authentication for each and every API, you, you can able to use, you can set authentication with the help of decorator. For this, we will use at auth. We will define the authentication for post here. We will be using bearer auth. Uh, this is token authentication. You can also use basic auth. So we can define the same for all the operations. Now I'm compiling this and you can able to see in the open API specification, it also takes a security and the security property is now added and it is a bearer auth type. You can define whatever authentication you want. And this is how we will define authentication on the API level. And next we will see one of the very important topic, which is versioning. If you have an API, which will be used by multiple teams, it is highly possible you will be versioning it. For example, today you have V1, a year later you found, okay, we need to add one more API, but that API might break the existing contract. In that case, you can't really go with the existing API. We want to support the V1 version or the X version, and you need to create X plus one version, and that has the new capability. So this type spec also provides a way for us to define versioning. So to do that, we need to add type spec versioning. So go back to package.json, add type spec versioning. I am just keeping it as latest. I need to do the same in the peer dependencies as well. And enter the command tsp install. So this will install the versioning dependency. So we have installed the versioning dependency. Once it is installed, then we need to add import for versioning on the top. So we need to add this import syntax. Once the versioning is imported, then we need to use the type spec versioning using type spec dot versioning. Now we have type spec dot versioning. So we will create two different versions. It can be any number of versions for that. We will be using enum. We will define enum and uh, we will name this as versions. It currently has two versions v1. You can give any name to it. I'm just keeping it as 1.0 and then there is another version which is v2. First we will see how to create a new API which is only applicable in v2 not in the v1. So for that I will create a new API in departments. So for that I will add v1 in the departments and this is v2 and here also it is v2 and for this v2 i'm trying to add a new api which supports get department employees so if you want to provide the department id i want all the employees associated to that particular department slash employees here v2 departments after that it adds employee after that we will be adding the path the department ID. So we'll be providing the department ID. We will get back all the employees associated to that particular department. Now we want to define this is only applicable in the V2, not in the V1. So to do that, we can define a decorator, which is at added, and you can define versions.v2. We need to define the versions annotation. So that's when we are making this particular namespace to contain multiple versions and enter the decorator at versioned provide the enum here versions now you should see that the error should be gone now we want this other apis also whatever we have already defined in the department now copy this department and paste it here so there is no change this is still applicable in the v2 as well now we have seen how to create a brand new api and a new version. Now, what if there is an existing model, we want to do some changes on top of it. For example, if I want to add a new property to existing model, for example, if I want to add a new property to an existing model, then we can use at adder annotation. So we'll go back to the department and here in the department, we will add a new property named as employee count. And this is of integer data type. I will define this as in 32 at add an annotation. And then we will define this is introduced in versions V2. 
no we are getting error in the examples that is because we don't have any example set for employee count so we will fix that as well we will add employee count as a property and we will just set an integer value so now we have defined a new property which is applicable only for the version v2 not for version v1 no what if i have a particular property that got renamed in a one version so for that we can use renamed from property so at renamed from the at renamed from you can define the version versions dot v2 and this is renamed to department email now we will issue tsp compile now we can able to see two open api specification yaml one open api 1.0 and one open api 2.0 So here in 1.0, if you go back, whatever we have created here as a new get department employees, copy this, and if you search this here, we won't really see. This is because this is not introduced in V1, but this API is not only introduced in V2. We can able to see this in V2. And if I go back to Open API 1.0. Here in the V1, in the department model, we can't see the employee count, but in V2, we can able to see the employee count. So this is because we have added that adder annotation. Thanks for watching. For more technical videos, subscribe to this channel. If you feel this video helped you, share it with your friends. Thank you.